Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me and if you're new on that channel, my name is Pamir, I am French and I have a cat called Sherlock. On this channel we talk about Jack the Ripper mainly. No, I'm not like that guy on Tinder, I did not ghost you, bitch I'm tired. That's why I didn't make new videos since November. So like I said before, I took a few months off because I've been a bit tired from life and I also wanted to think about which direction to take for this channel. As much as I love talking about Jack and I'm doing this because you know I'm passionate about it. I also want it to work and people to see the videos and last video it was one of my favorite but it didn't perform as well as I thought it would. That's why I didn't make new videos until today and I don't know how frequently I'm going to post but I'm back for now. We've got a new direction, we've got new plans. It's going to be quite interesting so stick around i kind of like the idea of the intro video i did previously if you've not watched it you can find it somewhere on that screen and i would advise you to watch it to know more about the whole jack the ripper case and get your foot into that world and i thought that maybe it was a good idea to do like intro more in depth than the intro video on some topics so that when we address the topics deeper like when we talk about one suspect you already have a bit of knowledge about him this topic will be a bit familiar to you and you won't be too much of a stranger coming into it and being like oh i don't know what you're talking about so for the first one of those jack the ripper 101 i thought that we could talk about the canonical five because it's something that comes often and when we talk about jack the ripper we often refer to the victim as the canonical five and I thought that in terms of introduction it was good for you to know what that term means so that when further on in another video I can just say canonical five and you will know what I'm talking about. I think that's it. Not in terms of the video, in terms of the intro of the video. Don't want you to go now, stay on, because there will be a bad joke at some point about my t-shirt. I wanted to start the video with that, but didn't want to put off people, so just stick around and we're going to get into the video. So to start with, what does canonical mean? So according to the Collins Dictionary, if something has canonical status, it is accepted as having all the qualities that a thing of its kind should have. So basically it's just something that is following a pattern. So in terms of Jack the Ripper, what does it mean? As I said previously, we call the five main victims the canonical five. Basically we use that term to distinguish them from a number of other women murdered in the same area during the same period. We gather them together because these five victims were murdered between August and November in the same area which is Whitechapel and it's quite a small area even though they're still far apart for some of them it's still quite a small area so that's why we gather them together. Who were they? Who were the canonical five? The first one is Marianne Nichols also known as Polly Nichols and she was murdered on the night of 31st of August 1888 at the age of 43. The second one, Annie Chapman, was murdered on the night of the 8th of September 1888 at the age of 47. The third and fourth one were killed on the same night, so you have Elizabeth Stride, also called Longlees, who was murdered on the night of the 30th of September 1888 at the age of 45. And then you have Catherine Eddowes, murdered on the same night, the 30th of September 1888 at the age of 47. And the last one, but not the least, is Mary Jane Kelly, murdered on the night of the 9th of November 1888 at the age of 25. So you can clearly see here a pattern in terms of age apart from Mary Jane Kelly. They were all around the same age, 43 for the youngest, Mary Jane Kelly aside, and then going to 47. On top of that pattern of age, we also have the police grouping them together from the start with a quote from police surgeon Thomas Bond who said that all five murders, no doubt, were committed by the same man. So here it's not just us but it's also the police grouping them together that confirm similarities between the crimes. But does that mean that the murders were all identical? No, far from it. They were all very different. They didn't look the same, well, they all had the same base, but then they had differences that you could, well, you can clearly see. For example, Maria Nichols had her throat cut and she suffered 
flashes to her abdomen that were only discovered at the mortuary when they tried to remove her clothes. But she wasn't mutilated beyond that. Then you've got the case of Elizabeth Stride, who only got her throat cut. She didn't suffer any other mutilations to her body. And then you've got the worst one, Mary Jane Kelly, who had her throat cut too, but was also eviscerated and her body butchered. All of these five were choked first and then they had their throat cut. The mutilation after that kind of differed from one to another. Maria Nichols was just slashes, Annie Chapman had her abdomen cut and was eviscerated. Same for Catherine Edwards, Elizabeth Wright only had her throat cut, Mary Jane Kelly eviscerated, butchered. They were all very different and it shows an escalation between the first one and the last one. As I just said, even though every murder is different from the next one, in a way, there is a base there. The throat being cut each time and mutation of the stomach. And remember that point for later. We can clearly see an escalation in the violence. Maybe he became bolder, maybe he just became more maniac, we don't know. But what about Elizabeth Stride, you might ask? As previously mentioned, only her throat was cut and she didn't suffer any other mutilation to her body. It doesn't mean that she was lucky because she still died and her death is still sad. But what does that mean? Does it mean that she wasn't a Jack the Ripper victim or something else? Well, not necessarily. It could be that Jack was interrupted. Remember when Liz was found, Louis, and I'm going to try to say his name properly, Jim Schutz had a moment of hesitation and shied to the left, almost knocking into the passage wall, which made Jim Schutz stop and investigate. And that's when he saw what he recognized to be a woman lying on the ground. He then rushed inside to check on his wife. The killer had seen Bill there. It gave him some time to flee the scene. Some people say that Jack may have been hiding in the corner of the passageway and Dim Schutz's pony was scared because he saw a man there just in the shadow. If Dim Schutz didn't go check on his wife, he probably would have seen who the Reaper is, but he also could have died, so. But there are also people saying that Liz's murder could have been done by a different killer. There are theories putting Liz outside of the canonical victims and putting Martha Tabram in instead. The fact that we could attribute Liz's murder to someone else could be explained by the scene that happened pre-murder. On the night Liz was killed, a man called Israel Schwartz said that he saw some commotions between a man and Liz and when he saw them, they were just by the gateway, she would be found dead later. That placed Liz and another man in that spot where she was killed before her death and, and from the description that man doesn't really fit the Jack the Ripper description so it gets us to wonder. But then what happened next makes us wonder even more. What Israel saw that night is a man threw Liz on the ground, he saw Liz screaming and then when Schwartz crossed to the opposite side of the street, I know, really brave man, not helping this poor woman, but I guess different times. To be fair, not sure people would help you even now. If you got assaulted on the street, would they help you? I don't know, but let's go back to the story. So when he crossed to the opposite side of the street, he heard the man who was attacking Liz call out to another man who followed Schwartz down the street. He said, hey Lipsky, remember that because that's something that comes often in the Jack the Ripper world. So what do I think? Well, in my opinion, I still think that Liz was one of Jack's victims. How else can you explain Catherine Edo's later that night if it wasn't for Jack not finishing his job on Liz and needing to kill again and mutilate this time? But this whole Lipsky story makes us wonder, could there be more there? Or, you know, Whitechapel was a rough area at that time. She could have been assaulted before. And then Jack found her and strike. But we'll talk more about that when we'll talk about Lizzie's murder and the double event. Now that we've talked about the canonical five, could there be more victims of Jack? 
Well, altogether, 11 separate murders from the 3rd of April 1888 to February 1891 were included in the London Metropolitan Police Service investigation. They were all called collectively the Whitechapel murders, mainly because they all took place in the same area. Some of the most famous ones that are often attributed to Jack are the following. First, you have Emma Smith. She's often referred to as the first Jack the Ripper victim, even though her murder is very different to what happened to the Jack the Ripper victim. Emma was assaulted by three to four men. They beat her, they raped her, and they jabbed a blunt object into her vagina. She died four days later of her injury while in hospital. The fact that she was attacked by a group of men makes it less plausible that she was one of Jack's victims. Unless Jack was not just one man, but was a group of men, which could also be why the Lipsky story. But it doesn't really add up. The modus operandi is not the same, her throat wasn't cut, the mutation that Emma suffered were not on her stomach but were very different, so it's difficult to really say that she is one of Jack's victims. The second one though, Martha Tabram, I often refer to her as the first Jack the Ripper victim and I'm not the only one doing it sometimes. Like I said previously, Liz is taken out of the canonical five and Martha is put in because Martha's murder really shows signs of being the first Jack the Ripper murder. Martha was killed on the night of the 7th of August 1888. She was stabbed 39 times in the abdomen area and the placement of the stab wounds makes her the plausible first victim because he really focused on her abdomen and stabbed so many times that it could be the premises of what happened after Tupolinikos with the slashes of her abdomen. Like it could be a normal escalation from the stab wounds in the abdomen to Tupolinikos after with the slashes to then Annie Chapman with the gutting. But we don't know. Because her throat again wasn't cut, we can't really attribute it to Jack. And then you have the later one. You have Alice Mackenzie murdered on the night of the 16th of July, 1889. Her cause of death was the severance of the left carotid artery, but her body was also mutilated. And here I'm going to read the notes. She suffered of two stabs in the left side of the neck, some bruising on chest, plus bruises and marks on the left side of abdomen, seven inch but not seven inch but not unduly deep wound from the bottom of left breast to the navel, seven or eight scratches beginning at the navel and pointing toward the genitalia, small cut across the mum's veneris. Some people attribute this murder to Jack and often say that, that could be his last one because by that time, 1889, Jack would be too ill to be able to mutilate fully the body. But that's based on the theory that Jack would have contracted syphilis from a sex worker and that's why he would kill them. But that again, we've seen that not all victims were sex workers, so it doesn't really work here. And then you have Frances Coles, murdered on the 13th of February 1891. Her throat was cut, but she didn't suffer any other mutilations. The killer also didn't strangle her prior to the cut, which some said that Jack did on the canonical five. So that's why it's an important point. And I make it at the end so that I see who's been watching until the end. So what do you think? Do you think there was five victims? Do you think there was more? Do you think there was less? Do you think Martha Tabram should be placed in the canonical? Should it be a canonical six instead? Do you think Elizabeth tried is part of the five? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. We can have a discussion about that topic and see what we all think. Let's make it something that you learn, we talk about it, we discuss. Let's make it interactive. Anyway, this is the end of this video, I think, for now. And if you stuck that long, let me do the joke that I wanted to do at the beginning of the video, but I didn't do because I didn't want to put people off. So if you've seen my t-shirt, it says 
vegan so I wanted to start the video by saying hi I'm vegan what's your name but I didn't want people that hate vegan to not watch the rest of the video so I didn't want to start with that that's your gift your prize for sticking up that long and yeah I still don't know what the next video will be if it will be another Jack the Ripper 101 or if it will be something else I still haven't made that video about from hell so maybe it will be that one I don't know April is my birthday month so will there be another video I don't know maybe we should try to do every two weeks instead of once a month but I also know myself I also know that there are stuff coming at I'm going to my hometown in May for the whole month because this bitch is tired. The last few years have not been good on me. I need some green in my life and some rest. So we'll see, maybe I'll record videos from there. It will be fun to do it from my grandparents. The most important thing is that I'm back. We're going to take new directions on this channel. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be more interactive where I'm going to ask you questions, see what you think. And yeah, I mean, I love like this I've missed it I've missed recording I'm probably not going to miss editing next week is not going to be fun for me but yeah I missed putting this into the world and I missed you guys I'm happy to be back let's hope it's not going to be again another long break until I make another one I hope you enjoyed this video if you like it you can subscribe and click on the thumbs up to like it I don't know do whatever you want until next time take care Enjoy life and have fun and I'll see you very soon. Bye!